praise his holy name it's such a blessing to be here on this crisp cool Sunday morning it's a blessing get up out that bed get down to your churches go support the ministry go invite others to come in from the north south east and west to hear the good news the gospel of Jesus Christ your pastor your leader minister has a powerful word for you today and you need to go and here you say i heard no but faith doesn't come by what you heard only faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of god we are so excited to be here on this sunday morning god has kept us and he's kept you he kept us from danger seen and unseen and we thank god for his grace and his mercy not because we were so good not because we did everything uh right but he who knew no sin became sin that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for your kingdom come, your will be done. We thank you for the peace of God, the presence of God. We thank you for the power of God. We thank you, Father God, for souls being saved on today. We thank you, Father God, for people coming into the kingdom from the north, the south, east, and west. Every minister, every elder, every pastor, every teacher, Father God, every evangelist, touch their hearts, their minds, that they might preach the gospel, the good news, and millions will be set free in Jesus' mighty name. We pray, amen. We thank you in the name of Jesus because God is good, and we trust that our vision for Jesus Saves Ministries and others who would like to be a part of what God is doing in our ministry, that we would uh, get you to pray to God and ask him the direction you need to be going in in this hour. It's been it's a, it seems to be a dark hour for those who don't know. And uh, so many bad things are happening. You know, death, confusion, racism, you know, the shootings and all those things. But we have, God has given us a vision that Jesus says in ministry. And it says, the Lord Jesus Christ has appeared unto us, praise be to God, for this purpose, hallelujah, to make us ministers and witnesses, both of the things which we have seen and of those things in which he will appear unto us delivering us from the people and the Gentiles unto whom he sent us to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness unto light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sin and an inheritance among them which, hallelujah, are sanctified by faith, watch this, in me, Jesus Christ. So we thank God for the vision uh, that he's given us, and we pray that you would continue to stand on the promises. We're in Galatians, uh, and I just pray that you would uh, search the scriptures for in Romans chapter 15 and 4, it says uh, it's the scriptures was given, was written for our learning, and the, the Greek word for learning is didaskia, and it refers to learning, teaching, and instruction. For the scriptures, we uh, from the scriptures, we can learn about God and his interaction with man. It says, for whatever things were written, huh, was written for our learning. So uh, the thing that we're talking about and talking about today, it was written for our learning. It was not just written for you to go back and have a history lesson on what happened in the past is for us to know what God is speaking in this hour. And we thank God for an hour of power. So if you would open up your Bibles to Galatians, hallelujah, we're going to start at chapter 4, and we just thank God that you have your Bibles and that you would go back and read and study because I will not be able to ex exegete all this information. I will not be able to, you know, go over everything. But if you would go back and read it, the Holy Spirit will speak to your heart. And that's even for those who are in church or going to church this morning, when your pastor, your teacher, you guys, whoever is preaching the gospel, it is your responsibility to go back and study and read God's word in Jesus' mighty name. Let's start at chapter four. We've been reading uh, the Galatians uh, and, and you need to go back and go back and check it out for yourself, amen. Let's talk about our, our airship. You know, we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. And it gives us an illustration, praise be God. In chapter 4, it says, um, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differs not from a servant, though he be Lord of all. Huh? But 
verse 2 says, is under tutors, governors, until the time appointed of the Father. Verse 3 says, even so we, when we were children, hmm, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But Christ redeemed us, hallelujah. He redeemed, hallelujah, lost servants and made him sons of God. He redeemed us. We've been redeemed from the curse of the law, poverty, sickness, and death. It says, but verse 4 says, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, hallelujah, made of a woman, hallelujah, under the law. To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. As many as receive him, to them gave you power to become sons of the Most High God. Sons and daughters, we thank God. Hallelujah. Verse 6 says, And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, into your heart, into my heart, into those who we believe, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son and if a son then an heir of god through christ anybody understand heirship anybody understand inheritance anybody who's lost a loved one who their the family some people have i've seen them fight over things that the uh deceased person uh left behind but did not leave a will and because they assumed they were the son or the daughter or niece or the nephew, they were cut out of that will. It could have been millions of dollars. It could have been a lot of material things. And that's how it all is with our lives. We go to church or we say we believe, but we don't understand our full inheritance. Amen. We don't understand what God has done through his son, Jesus Christ, by the power of the spirit of Christ living in us that now we operate in victory, not in the sweet by and by. Hallelujah. God has given us authority to operate in our airship now. Praise be to God. With all the darkness, with all the confusion, with everything that's happening, we are heirs of God. So we have a message. We have a word. Not so much just talking, but how do we live our lives? How do we live amongst our community? How do we live amongst our enemies? How do we live, praise be to God, in this dying world? Praise be to God that Jesus Christ is soon to come and he's going to rapture us out of here. Will you be ready? As an heir, praise be to God, that belongs to us. That's a promise that belongs to us. Listen, it says, Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ Jesus. It's in Christ we live, it's in Christ we move, and it's in Christ we have our being. It says, How be it then, when you knew not God, you did serve unto them, which by nature are no gods. But now, verse 9 says, after you have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn you again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto you desire again to be in bondage and been set free by the blood of Jesus? We're no longer under the curse of the law. Praise be to God under the rules of men. God has set us free from darkness. We don't need to walk in darkness. We don't need to entertain darkness. We walk in the light. Praise be to God. You observe days. You observe months and times and years. I'm afraid of you. Lisa, least I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. At least I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. What God has done for us is not in vain. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. What God, the promises God has given to us, it belongs to the children of God. And we operate in it, not in the sweet by and by only. God wants us to begin to operate now. The world should see the difference in how we talk and how we walk and how we carry ourselves and how we commune with other believers. They are not seeing that in many cases. But it has to happen now because Jesus Christ is soon to come. I know you heard that. I know people told you over and over ever since you were a little child. Me too. Jesus Christ is soon to come. He's coming tomorrow. He's coming next week. We all had all kinds. Listen, ready or not, he's coming. Hallelujah. And you might die before he returns. But the Bible even says the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we that remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. However, the grave is going to give up the dead. And we're going to have to stand in judgment 
and be judged for our disobedience to the word of God. Yes, we know Adam and Eve committed high treason. We know, praise be to God, sin was flushed into this world because of disobedience. But so was righteousness. Praise be to God, Jesus Christ. He who knew no sin became sin, died on the cross, yet shed his precious blood for you and for me. I love this part. While we were yet sinners, people say, Bishop, you, 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 you go with the same thing. Well, faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. And we need to go over it till it's in our spirit, in our heart. We need to walk it, talk it, live it. Praise be to God on our jobs. Everywhere we go, praise be to God. Warning people, telling people with all the things, the viruses and all the things that has been happening in this world, not just in this country, around the world. Praise be to God. People have changed the narrative. You cannot change God. He's a little God. I'm, I changed that. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. But people have changed the narrative. Now they say you can live it and do it anyway you want to do it you can live any way you want to you can come and go when you want to not so not so not when you're under headship praise be to god i remember as a child again praise be to god we were under headship i'm not talking about god at this point i'm talking about my father and my mother praise they had rules and regulations it was a bunch of us praise be to god but all of us was under that headship we can do what we want to do we can do it any way we want to do it we had to do it praise be to god according to the rules and regulations, being at a certain time, eat at this, eat, uh, uh, at, if you had to be at the dinner table at the same time, you can just come and walk in and go in the refrigerator and do what you want to do. You could watch TV all day. You had to get a book. You had to read. You had to go to work. Even on some Saturday mornings when you were ready to go to the high school football game. Praise be to God. Well, God Almighty, hallelujah, he allows us to see the type through, uh, to our childhood. He see the type of parenthood but there's nothing like the real thing. And that's why you got to go back, you got to go read, you got to go study. He says, look, but now after you have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn you get to the weak and beggarly elements? Hallelujah, until you desire again to be in bondage. Ye observe days and months and times and years. I'm afraid of you, least I have bestowed upon you uh, your labor in vain. So now he appeals to the Gentiles Hallelujah. To the original consecration. Look what he says. He says, brethren. He calls them believers. Hallelujah. We're talking to the believers. And if you're not a brother today, if you haven't given your heart over to Jesus Christ, hallelujah, invite him into your heart today. Hallelujah. Just say, Lord, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, your word says, him that come to me, I will in no ways cast out. So, hallelujah, hallelujah, you I won't cast me out, but you take me in, and I thank you for it. Invite him in. Invite him in. Invite him in. Look at verse 12. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am. For I am as you are. Ye have not injured me at all. Verse 13 says, You know how through infirmities of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at first. And my temptation which was in my flesh, is that where the temptation comes in our flesh? What we see, what we feel, what we touch, what we taste. That's why we got to keep our senses in check. We got to keep what we, what, what those five senses, what we can hear, smell, see. But God, what you hear? There's some garbage on television. There's some garbage on, you know, iPads and phones. Bit. Praise be to God. And they're getting it from not just this corner of the world. It's global. They're hearing and seeing all kinds of things. People are using language, and it has become a part of our vernacular worldliness. But listen, it says this. It says, you know how through infirmities of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at first, and my temptation which was in the flesh, ye desired not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even, hallelujah, as Christ Jesus, where then, where then, where is then the blessedness you speak of? Where is it? Huh? For I bear you record that if I had been, it had been possible, you have plucked, huh, out your eyes and have given them to me. Am I therefore become, huh, your enemies because I tell you the truth? Hallelujah. 
The Bible says you should know the truth, and the truth that you know will set you free. But when you start telling the truth, you're going to get some enemies. When you start telling some truth, there's going to be some many, many, many challenges. As long as you go with the narrative of how things are and how you think it should be and what you heard traditionally, you're cool. But when you begin to speak truth, praise be to God, got a little problem. He says, I am therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth. Huh? He says, they zealously affect you, but not well. Ye that would exclude you, that you might affect them. But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing. And not only when I am present with you. Look at verse 19. It says, my little children of whom I travail in birth again unto Christ be formed in you. I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt of you. Tell me, you that desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? See, they want to go back to the weak and beggarly things. They don't want to deal with religious stuff, but not revelation. They, they want to, they, they, they're good with the religion. They're good with what they was handed to them from the natural sources but hallelujah the relationship they 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 they, they, they haven't had the, the 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 relationship with god the father son and the holy spirit hallelujah hallelujah a one-on-one -on -one relationship do you have a one-on-one -on -one relationship or are you uh seeking god through somebody else you need to know for yourself. That's why I read. I, I, I don't have a text. I don't have a verse. I, don't, I just read and, 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 and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart as well as mine. This is tell me. You have a desire to be under the law. Do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bond woman and the other one by a free woman. But he who was of the bond woman was born after the flesh. But, of, but he that of the free woman was born of the promise. How about that? The pro with promise. Hallelujah. You understand what a promise is? When you make a promise to somebody, your life depends on it. Praise be to God. We, we make weak promises, but the truth of the matter is when you made a promise, God made a promise. Praise be to God. Uh, and we thank God that we are part of, we stand here as part of the promise. It says, which things are allegories for those are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai at which generous to bondage, which is Hagar, for this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and answereth to the Jews, which now is and is in bondage, hallelujah, with her children. They're in bondage. He said, he said that they're in bondage with her children. Watch this. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. We're not talking about that. Here, it says, but Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of all. Look at verse 27. For it is written, Rejoice thou barren that beareth not. Hallelujah. Break forth and cry, thou that travaileth not. For the desolate has many more children than she which hath a husband. Hallelujah. Now we brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as them, hallelujah, then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. Even so it is now. Nevertheless, what show, hallelujah, the scriptures? What saith the scripture, excuse me? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. So here, before we close, conclude, God wants to warn us against going into the law of bondage. We're not in bondage again. Praise be to God. He's brought us out. In, in, in the next chapter, he starts telling us, stand fast. He says, stand fast. How? In the liberties. Hallelujah. We're in Christ has set you free. And then he says, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. 
You've been set free. Who wants to go back into slavery? Who wants to go back into confusion and doubt and, 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 and miss the mark? You've been set free. Stand fast. He says, stand fast. Behold, Paul, I say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again, every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. But Christ... Christ has become of no effect, if you want to go in that way, unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. We're going to stop there. But grace, God's grace and God's mercy, your assignment is to go back and read about God's grace and, and God's mercy. We're not under the law. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Some are, are still bound in the law, even in this age. They want to go back to... Uh, the, 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 all the rituals of, of, of the things that they believe Christ stands for, what God stands for. You don't have to. All you need to do is go. It says, for Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth much, nor uncircumcision, but faith, which worketh by love. Hallelujah. Faith, which worketh by love. Huh? Grace. It was God's grace and God's mercy for in Christ Neither circumcision is available as much, nor uncircumcision, but faith which works by love. And as I close, I'm close with these three verses, four verses. It says, you did not run well. Who did hinder you? You did run well. Who did hinder you? You did run well. Who did it hinder you that you should now obey, uh, not obey the truth? You shall not obey the truth. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth in a whole lump. I have confident in you though hallelujah through the lord jesus that you will be none otherwise minded but that he troubled you shall bear his judgment whosoever he is last two verses and i brethren if i yet pre-circumcision why do i yet suffer persecution hallelujah then is the offense of the cross cease i would they were even cut off which trouble you. But we are no longer in bondage and we shouldn't be troubled because God has left us with a teacher. And the teacher is the Holy Spirit. And as you go back and read, there's so much more that you need to go back and read. Hallelujah. He gives us a warning about wanting to deal with the law. Hallelujah. He wants us to be free from the law. The Jews wanted to, to, to uh, introduce the the. the, the the law and keep it into the mix with the Gentiles and, 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 and the Holy Spirit is not so. We don't have to do the things of the flesh anymore. Praise be to God. The sacrifice has been made. We're not, I know it's a lot of language in here. Hallelujah. But love is the fulfillment of the law. And if you begin to read how much God loved us, hallelujah, we're no longer under the curse of poverty, sickness, and death. And the allegories that he used with uh, Agar and Sarah was because the people were so familiar with that setting and so familiar with the terminology and they grew up and they understood, hallelujah, what was left behind by their forefathers. But Jesus, who knew no sin, came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus, hallelujah, who died on Calvary to set us free. Jesus, who now sits at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us, praise be to God. If you will go back and read his word, yes, Bishop, you just spoke a lot of things that, I mean, we kind of like, we don't really understand. Go read it. The Holy Spirit will tell you. You say you're not reading. It's a phone. You could take your phone and you could play it all day and get some truth. Hallelujah, hear truth through words that you, you couldn't pronounce. Now you could listen, you know, through technology. There's no excuse. The Bible says there is no excuse. Jesus is soon to come. You need to go back and read God's word. You need to go back and fight the good fight of faith. And notice it's not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rules of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. God is looking for you to be set free from anything that holds you in bondage.
anything that would hold you in the bondage, or anyone that would try to hold you in bondage, it can be religion. It can be the temple things, the things that you pride and possess in your, in, in, in your lifetime. Hallelujah. Money, cars, house. It's good. To, and let me tell you something. It's a blessing to have a nice home. It's a blessing to have a nice car. But the question is, do you have Jesus? All those things are temple. They used to say heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will never pass away. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Won't you give your life over to Jesus? Won't you invite him into your heart today? Just with me, if you could just pray with me this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Your word says, in him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. So I know you won't cast me out, but you take me in, and I thank you for it. You said in your word that if I shall confess the Lord Jesus Christ with my mouth and believe in my heart that he died and rose from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Say this with me. I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe he was raised from the dead for my justification. I am calling upon his name now, the name of Jesus, so I know Father, that you save me now. Please go back and read. I I, I, I I fully understand, hallelujah, how you could say, well, what in the world is he talking about? You know, you got to go back and read it. Father God, I thank you for the souls that will come into your kingdom on today. All around the globe, all the churches that's open on this time zone. I thank you, Father God, for them coming in from the north, south, east. I thank you for churches being full of of folk that would acknowledge you, but I, I thank you for the church that will go into all the world and preach the gospel. I thank you for the church without the walls as well. Father, you, you, you're you not limited by buildings or not buildings. You're not even limited by people, but it's your will that none should perish. So we as believers need to go in the highways and the byways and preach the gospel. Father God, the things that I've read on this morning I pray that the brothers and sisters and those who would give their life over to Jesus would go back and spend time and read and get with other fellow believers and read and study God's word. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this time. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor and praise. We thank you for all the people who are sick, being set free. We pray for those who family are bereaved right now. We pray for those who are incarcerated. We pray, hallelujah, the racism would be cut. Would, be, would cease. I, I, we pray that the shootings and the killings, hallelujah, would stop in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that we would all be a part of, hallelujah, seeing God operate in this world and in this life in the hearts of so many. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We love you.